Hello from Mr. CFT team. We are here with another great training package to teach you how to simulate turbo machines using ANSYS Fluent Software. Now, in the first session of this training package, what we're going to do is to cover some of the introduction and physical order that is needed to be mentioned. And uh, then we're going to talk about uh, the two most important approaches and methods for simulating rotary turbo machines, which are the frame motion and mesh motion techniques. The frame motion technique, as you can see here, is divided into two main categories of single reference frame, or SRF, and multiple reference frame, or MRF. Uh, then, after actually discussing these two submodels, we're going to talk about the mesh motion technique and specifically talk about the sliding mesh model, or SMM. After introducing these main approaches, we are going to present a summary of this session and we're going to compare the mentioned methods with each other. When you create a model using Fluent, you are typically modeling the flow in an inertial reference frame, meaning in a non-accelerating coordinate system. However, Fluent has also the ability to model flows in an accelerating reference frame. In this situation, the acceleration of the coordinate system is included in the equations of motion describing the flow. A common example of an accelerating reference frame in engineering application is flow in rotating equipment. Many such flows can be modeled in a coordinate system that is moving with the rotating equipment and thus experiences a constant acceleration in the radial direction. This class of rotating flows can be treated using the rotating reference frame capability in Fluent. Several examples of problems that can be modeled using a rotating reference frame are illustrated here. The applications shown here include impellers in mixing tanks, rotating turbo machinery blades, centrifugal imp impellers, axial fans, and so on. Flows in rotating passage, for example, cooling ducts, secondary airfoil circuits, and a disc cavity in rotating equipment. When such problems are defined in a rotating reference frame, the rotating boundaries become stationary relative to the rotating frame, since they are moving at the same speed as the reference frame. Now it's time to answer this question that, why should we use rotating reference frame? Inherently, the problems mentioned in the previous slide are unsteady. Actually, to be more correct, the flow field inside such devices uh, is unsteady when viewed in a stationary frame, but the flow field can become steady when viewed in a rotating frame. And of course, steady state problems are easier to solve than unsteady problems. Also, it should be mentioned that due to the turbulence separation non-uniform variations in flow, the unsteadiness can still be seen in rotating frame. When the equations of motion are solved in the rotating frame of reference, the acceleration of the fluid is argumented by additional terms that appear in the momentum equations. Fluent allows you to solve rotating frame problems using either the absolute velocity or the relative velocity as the dependent variable. Here uh, in the equation, omega is the angular velocity vector, that is the angular velocity of the rotating frame, and r is the position vector in the rotating frame. Actually, uh, note that Fluent cannot accurately model a time varying angular velocity using the relative velocity formulation. Also, you can see the Coriolis acceleration and centrifugal acceleration and the RVF accelerations and formula due to rotating frame and uh, acceleration reduces to single term involving rotational speed and absolute velocity in the AVF accelerations uh, equation due to uh, rotating frame. As you all probably know, in ANSYS Fluent Software, fluid flow and heat transfer equations are solved in a stationary reference frame by default. However, using the reference, uh, frame motion technique gives us the advantage to solve the equation in a moving reference frame. Uh, in other words, the principal reason for employing the frame motion technique is to render a problem which is unsteady in the stationary frame to a steady problem with respect to a moving frame. Uh, for a steadily rotating frame, meaning that the rotational speed is constant, it is possible to transform the equations of fluid motion to the rotating frame such that a steady state solution are possible. It also should be noted that you can run an unsteady simulation in a moving reference frame with constant rotational speed. This would be necessary if you want to simulate, for example, vortex shedding from a rotating fan blade. 
As was mentioned, the frame motion technique is categorized into two submodels of SRF and MRF. The SRF submodel is the simplest and have the least computational cost, making it suitable for modeling simplified problems while the MRF submodel can simulate more complicated problems in which multiple rotating and stationary zones are present. As shown in the figure in this slide, when the entire domain is rotating, the SRF submodel is used. However, in the cases where we have stationary objects in our model, such as baffles in the middle figure, or even we have multiple rotating or stationary zones, MRF must be used. Actually, to make it more clear, it should be mentioned that frame motion technique can be exploited only for applications in which there is either no inflow into the domain, such as steer tanks, or the inflow and outflow directions are parallel to the rotating axis of, of the investigated turbo machines, such as horizontal axis wind turbine, axial compressor, and so on. Uh, but how about the problems where the physics is different? In application where the inflow and outflow directions are perpendicular to the rotating axis of the investigated turbo machine, the frame motion techniques, which are SRF and MRF, are not suitable and cannot be used. The most prominent case is the investigation of vertical axis wind turbine or VAWTs. For these type of problems, mesh motion techniques should be utilized, which will be explained in the next slides. The relative motion of stationary and rotating components in a turbo machine will give rise to unsteady interactions. These interactions are generally classified as follows. Potential interactions, which are due to the pressure wave interactions, wake, wake interactions, shock interactions. Also, it should be mentioned that frame motion techniques, meaning SRF, MRF, neglect unsteady interactions entirely when a steady state solver is used and thus are limited to flows where these effects are weak. If unsteady interactions cannot be neglected or the inflow direction is perpendicular to the rotating axis, or even if we simply would like to view the rotation of the investigated turbo machine, we can simply employ the sliding mesh model to account for the relative motions of the stationary and rotating components. When a time-accurate solution for rotor stator interactions rather than a time-average solution is desired, you must use the sliding mesh model to compute the unsteady flow field. Most often, the unsteady solution that is sought in a sliding mesh simulation is time-periodic, that is, the unsteady solution repeats with a periodic related to the speed of the moving domains. Or you have other types of transient problems, such as two cars or trains passing in tunnel as shown in the figure in this slide, or even in the cases where rotor stator interactions is desired and uh, you want to actually uh, see the physical motion of them. In these cases, you must use a sliding mesh. The sliding mesh model is the most accurate method for simulating flows in multiple moving reference frames, but it also is the most computationally demanding. In the sliding mesh technique, two or more cell zones are used. Each cell zone is bounded by at least one interface zone where it meets the opposing cell zone. The two cell zones will move relative to each other along the grid interface. Note that the grid interface must be positioned so that it has fluid cells on both sides. For example, the grid interface for the geometry shown in figure here must lie in the fluid region between the rotor and the setter. It cannot be on the edge of any part of the rotor or setter. During the calculations, the cell zones slide or translate relative to one another along the grid interface in discrete steps. Figure 1 and 2 here show the initial position of two grids and their position after some translation. The grid interface and the associated interface zones can be any shape, provided that the two interface boundaries are based on the same geometry. Figure 1 shows an example with a linear grid interface and figure 2 shows the circular arc grid interface. In both figures, the grid interface is shown by a dashed line. If figure 1 was extruded to 3D, the resulting uh, sliding interface would be a plane or rectangle. And if figure 2 was extruded to 3D, the resulting interface would be a cylinder. Figure 3 shows an example that would use a conical grid interface. The slanted dashed lines represent the intersection of the conical interface with a 2D plane. Actually, for an axial rotor stator configuration in which the rotating and stationary parts are aligned axially, instead of being concentric, the interface will be a planar sector, 
This planar sector is a cross-section of the domain perpendicular to the axis of rotation at the position along the axis between rotor and stator. Mesh motion technique can be used for almost any application. However, its biggest setback is the high computational demand for simulating even the simplest problems. Therefore, it is computationally more efficient to use frame motion technique where possible by simplifying our problem. The two most important computational methods for simulating rotary turbo machines are frame and mesh motion techniques. The frame motion technique itself is categorized into two submodels of SRF and MRF, which are more economic in terms of computational cost than the mesh motion technique. However, the downside to using these submodel is that inherent unsteady terms due to the rotation of impellers are neglected. To overcome such setback, the mesh motion technique can be used, but it comes with the penalty of high computational cost. Moreover, in opposite to frame motion technique, when the mesh motion is used, a mesh interface should be defined between the rotating and stationary domains to allow for the sliding of mesh cells over each other. For the final part, a detailed comparison between frame motion and mesh motion techniques is presented here. As seen, each of these techniques have their advantages and disadvantages. For instance, for cases where the unsteady terms are negligible, it is better to use frame motion technique since it allows for the utilization of a steady solver. However, for cases where we would like to see the rotating motion of the turbo machine's impeller or accurately model the unsteady terms, the mesh motion technique is the main option to use. Nevertheless, the computational cost of using this method should also be considered. To benefit from Mr. CFD services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com or visit our website www.mrcfd.com.